My name is Kwesi Adamaku Mensa. If you can't tell for that, I'm the child of immigrants. The adults of my family are from Ghana, and I still say that even though I'm turning 32 tomorrow. And part of being part of that immigrant experience, especially being first generation, is understanding that the food that you eat at home is gonna be different than the food all your friends eat at home. And growing up in the Bronx, New York, that was never a problem. There's literally a block where I grew up where there's a pizza place next door to a fried chicken place, next door to a birani place, and the last two are owned by the same family. <laughs> so we were used to using food as a way to express our cultures to each other. In fact, if you were over at a friend's place, you just had whatever their mom was cooking that night. I had plenty of friends over at my mom's place that would have some of my mom's jollof rice. And I would go over to my Puerto Rican's friend's house, and that's where I got introduced to the beauty that is adobo spice seasoning. <laughs> oh my God, if you ever have a chance to try it, you can put it on pasta, you can put it on scrambled eggs, it's so good. In fact, we were so used to using food as a way to express culture, it became even more important than the language. My mom actually stopped speaking Tri, my family's local language in Ghana, because in kindergarten it was taking too long for me to pick up English. And this was before everyone knew that being bilingual was gonna be the new hotness. <laughs> but even without the language, I, my home was still filled with the smells of my mom's food, of my mom's shito, my mom's pepper sauce, my mom's kenke. I still grew up around those smells. And so fast forward a couple of years, I'm 23, I've been in Boston for about a year or two straight out of college, and I have a new group of friends I'm forming in this new city of mine. And they decide to throw a potluck, and a lot of people in this group are Indian, so I'm like, yes, they can handle the food of my mom's spice, they'll love it, it's great, they can do it. And again, I knew I needed to step up my game. Being a 23-year-old guy right out of college, a lot of times my contribution to stuff like this was doing the last minute beer run. So I knew I wanted to make them something traditional, something that was close to my heart, and I decided to make them my favorite peanut butter soup. And so a lot of people hear peanut butter and like, what? Uh, but traditionally, it's really peanut soup, where you, ro you take the peanuts and you roast them and then you ground them and then you put them in the soup, but it's the 21st century and ain't nobody got time for that. <laughs> so a lot of people use peanut butter as a way of shortcutting that. And so peanut butter soup is actually, uh, it's like a tomato-based soup uh, that has all these great, interesting spices in it. And the peanut butter is there to add a creaminess to it. And if you do it right, it actually doesn't overtake anything else that's going on in the soup, but it still makes your entire apartment smell like Jiffy. <laughs> and I love that smell. That's the smell of fourth grade Questy getting all A's on his report card and his mom knowing exactly what to make to reward him for it. <laughs> I knew I wanted to make an authentic version of the recipe, and I knew I couldn't just grab a recipe off the internet. Turns out there's a lot of people who've put really bad versions of African food recipes on the internet. <laughs> if you want to see an example of that, there's a really famous chef that tried to make his own version of jollof rice. And if you don't know what jollof is, jollof is the staple rice dish all over West Africa. And there's this friendly rivalry between Ghana and Nigeria to see who makes the best version of it. Ghana, of course, wins. But we were able to put that aside the moment we saw what he published in the internet, and we were all like, that is the blandest thing we've ever seen in our lives. So I knew I had to call in an expert, and of course that expert was my mom. And if anybody's ever tried to learn a traditional recipe though, from their mom, from their uncle, from their grandma, or anything like that, you know they're anything but exact. <laughs> to give you an example, at one point my mom told me to slice up a fistful of onions, and I go, mom, I'm a foot taller than you. My hands are twice as big. And she goes, well, your friends better like onions. <laughs> and it's not just inexact in what proportions to use, but even how to make the meal. Instead of telling me how long to let the pot sit before I can touch anything inside, she tells a story about how my cousin Kofi has a permanent burn spot on his tongue because he tried to sneak some beef out of the pot before it was done cooling down. A lot of people talk about how the secret ingredient to their family's recipe is love. Well, I honestly believe that in my family, that secret ingredient is laughter. And so I finally finished making the peanut butter soup, and it smells amazing. It brings back all these memories to the, my love of the Power Rangers, to all the girls I was afraid to ask out. And I'm so excited about my peanut butter soup, I text the person who's running the potluck. 
And I go, oh my God, this is so great. You guys are going to love it. The beef even came out so well spiced. It's going to be great. And then I go to sleep. And then I wake up to five, six messages from her. And I'm thinking, oh man, I must have described this so well. She's so excited to have it. And that's when I actually read the messages. And I'm like, oh no. Because you see, this potluck was going to have a lot of Indian people at it. And there are going to be a lot of people who don't eat beef. There are going to be a lot of people who are vegetarians. And she was trying to be nice and console me. And she said, well, hopefully you left the beef on the side so that we can have the, so people can make their own decision about whether to have it with the soup and whatnot. And she's telling me this as I'm looking at the Tupperware full of soup that's had the beef soaking in it overnight. <laughs> and so I know I can't just take the beef out of it. That would be disrespectful. So at 8 a.m. the day of the potluck, I actually have to run back out to the store, get everything I need to make the soup again. And this time I use potatoes instead of beef to have something you know, chunky in the, in the soup. I bring it over to the potluck. And again, it's a lot of people who aren't used to peanut butter soup. And part of me is just like waiting for the first person to try it, mostly because I'm an attention seeker and I needed that validation. <laughs> Next thing I know, one person walks up, to, uh, walks up to my pot and goes, is that peanut soup? I'm like, oh, how would you know what that is? And she's like, I'm Indian, but I actually grew up in Nigeria. And she takes a ladle of it, takes a spoonful of it, and goes, ah. Oh. And that was the sign to the rest of the party that this was safe to eat. <laughs> And we actually spent a lot of the night talking about West Africa and growing, how her experience growing up there and my experience of having a bunch of family from there. And it was great. I achieved my goal of being able to share a little bit of myself and a little bit of my culture with these new friends I've been making. And so that's, uh, that episode started me getting more confident with my cooking skills. It even helped me get my current girlfriend, uh, who's actually Armenian, and introduced me to the beauty that is losh kebab. Oh, so good but quite the opposite of vegetarian. <laughs> One of the things I loved about learning how to make peanut butter soup is that it helped me become more active in participating in my culture. That day, I wasn't just Ghanaian because of my name. I wasn't just Ghanaian because I had some kente cloth in the back of my closet. I was Ghanaian because I took part of a tradition of making a meal that's frankly older than the country we're standing in right now. I took part of a tradition of helping to use food to spread joy to the people I love and care about. I took part of a tradition of using that special ingredient of laughter. Thank you.